Hey, it's Coach T. This is another one of the Affinity Publisher 2 videos. This one is a topic of a little bit of contention because the tool is not working as well as I would like it to right now. But what I'm going to be showing you to do in this hopefully brief tutorial is how to insert an index and make it look nice. Uh, if you really stop to think about what is an index, it's very different, although it looks similar and functions similar to a table of contents where a table of contents gives the reader a kind of mile high overview of what the topics are, are in the book and where to find them. An index, on the other hand, is much more about the nitty gritty referencing. So the thing with an index is that you have to be predicting what do you think the reader or the user is likely going to need to find really quick. And an index is supposed to help them as a reference to find the really key useful things. So you can see we've got our big boy index here. It's, it's a new page that I've added below our Green Lakes uh, uh, advertisement. And what we're gonna be doing is we're going to be inserting a quick and dirty index using Affinity's indexing tool. Now I will say off the top here, the indexing tool leaves a little bit to be desired, but it does make collecting the page numbers uh, really, really easy. We just need to take care to make sure that we use it the appropriate way. So I'm going to walk you through how to set this thing up. Before I get into that, if you like this head first, honest, practical approach to building cool stuff with software like Affinity Publisher 2, consider subscribing to my channel. I've got more videos that are coming, more challenges, and the real goal is to help adult learners like myself learn how to make something beautiful and practical uh, with minimum fuss but also in a safe space where you don't feel talked down to. That's what I'm all about. So we need to basically simulate the preparatory exercise of figuring out what might our reader need to know inside of our index. What are they gonna to need to look through in the book? What are they gonna to expect to see in that index? And if you do do something with a beta reader program, this is a great question to put on a form you know, did the index satisfy your needs? Is there anything that you thought that I missed or should be added? And the nice thing is Affinity makes it very easy to go back and update that index. It just has a couple extra steps and it can be a little bit finicky. I'll talk about a couple bugs that I encountered just while trying to record this video the first time. So, all right, here we go. We started with table of contents. The, the development process for an index is very, very similar. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna delete this one, get rid of it entirely. And you'll notice I do have a tab up here. We're gonna delete, oh yeah, you can't have more than one index because that wouldn't make any sense. We're gonna just delete the entire thing. If you don't have an index tab, which is the first of the bugs that I ran into, you need to go to window up here, top, window, scroll down till you find references. Scroll over on references and click on index. Make sure that index shows up. If index doesn't show up, you're cooked. It's gonna be really, really hard to do this. So, all right, we have our index. We, have, we can't insert it because there's nothing there. There's nothing to insert because what we need to do now is think about what words do we want or do we expect the user to need to reference. Now, this entire document that I built so far, this is all of our practice exercises. It would make absolutely no sense for me to go through and just start picking out like project here and words here. It's not fun. So what I did is I took our news and I rewrote part of the text, just this one part. So now we have three paragraphs with three watch words is what we're gonna call them. And these are words that we are going to mark as important for the index. It's very easy to do. So it says the new news today is that there's not much news going on up here in the mountains where I stare down and wait for smoke signals. Yesterday's news is that, well, there wasn't much news, but I saw a squirrel riding a dog and I thought, neat. Tomorrow's news, probably the same as yesterday's. I do hope to see that squirrel. So we have our lonely man in the watchtower, not a whole lot going on, possibly losing his mind. But what we do have is the topic of news. And I'm gonna start here, because this is something that I think the user might wanna check out. Where is my news column? I'm gonna go to text, scroll down to index towards the bottom, text index, and then I'm going to insert index mark. There is a hotkey there, good luck remembering it. So this that brings up this new menu with topic name, the uh, parent topic, and then an override style, which I'm going to try to borrow the override style. But what I wanna do is move with this button down here, I'm moving 
the parent style down because this is now the leftmost outer topic. And do, 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 do. index entry, number separator, page separator, cross reference. Actually, I'm going to leave that alone. And my topic name, I'm just going to leave this uh, blank. I don't need anything there. And then down here in this three paragraph section, I'm going to take today, go to text, index, insert index mark. And I want to make sure that I have this in news. That way it gets subroutined into the news column rather than just alphabetized to today. And I'll hit OK. And then I'm going to go to yesterday. And actually, I'm going to do yesterday's, and I'm deliberately making this mistake. We'll come back to it in a second, show you what it looks like. Insert index mark, yesterday's, and I'm not going to give it a style or a, a parent at the moment. Then I'm going to realize what I did, fix this, go just get yesterday, don't worry about the capitalization, go back to index, insert that mark again, and this time we're going to put it under the news parent, yesterday. And finally, we'll be more careful, we'll get just tomorrow, text, index, insert index mark, get it under that news parent, and hit OK. And you can nest these things in indefinitely, infinitely. I just would not recommend nesting in an index more than twice. Any deeper is ridiculous. So now, back on Big, Big Boy Index, we're going to go to text, index, and we're going to insert the index. And what that does is it trawls through all of the text in your document, and then it finds every flag that we just inserted and it adds that them to these index automatically. I should not have more than one index. What? Oh, you know what? I think it was already active. Update the index. There we go. Okay. So now we have an N category. We have a Y category. So it pre-alphabetizes you. And you could apply quick text layering or uh, headings to this if you want. Um, this is an index entry, and this is an index entry one, and that is an index entry two. Notice that it pre-populated text styles over here for me. So if I want to have index entry, which is one of these, oh, that's an index section heading, my bad. Uh, we're going to scroll this guy up, and we will update, and we'll also take in, wrong button, take this one, index entry one, which is our broad category, and we are going to you're going to make it bold, and then we'll update here. Notice that, so this is just a category. And with these guys, uh, we, will, we will add a tab stop to this. So I'm going to go to paragraph, tab stops. I'm working over here right now. And I can click and drag this out, pop this sucker out to make it a little bit easier to see. Go to tab stops, add new tab stop, and we're going to dial this up and we're going to add a dot in there and see how this works. Let's see, this always requires a little bit of playing with it to make it work. And we'll go to, oop, I should not have done that. If you do lose something like that, you can go to view, where are you? Views. If you do lose a panel, they're always somewhere in here. In this case, it's going to be down under text, oops, text, paragraph. And that brings it back and to snap it back into the tray, just click and drag to get your little blue box. And now we go to textiles and we can update like that. And that, oh, it didn't carry over. I was expecting it to carry over. That's unfortunate. Okay, well, what we can do is not that, apparently. Oh, oh, one was enough. Okay, so that is an issue that I have with the, with the indexing tool. It's a little bit buggy. So going back to what we're working on, and we are closing on 10 minutes for this video, so we're getting a little bit long in the tooth. Uh, we're going to come over here to yesterday's. This yesterday's column here, I don't want. Remember, if you if you did lose your index tab, go to view, and then or I'm sorry, go to window studio. Um, do, 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 or, sorry, window references index. But what we want to do is just delete with the 
garbage can icon there and it gets rid of everything that we don't want. Alternatively, we can get rid of this one and then we can get rid of this one and now the whole thing should be gone. It's just waiting for us to update the index. So now it's all gone. We don't have that issue anymore. Uh, we do have this issue of today not having a, uh, a body. So we're going to, we're just going to delete that. And if we update, it shouldn't come back. We should be good. And we have a little bit of artifacting. So I would recommend, just like with the table of contents, uh, the tool for indexing is a little bit buggy. I would recommend that you do it as one of the very last things that you're going to add because you might end up spending some time tinkering with these to get them to look just right like i lost my dots here uh, i can go back in i can activate them and then i can go like this but i i do notice it's just a little bit buggy it's a little bit tricky to make it look exactly how you want it to look so save this task for last don't worry about updating this thing constantly because it will become a time sink but that is a kind of overview in how to use the index. I realize it's messy, but it feels like a messy tool to me. And it's not something that you often have to work with in, uh, in Affinity because it's really an end of project stopping point. You know the book is done when you know the page numbers are pretty much all perfectly set and you feel comfortable inserting an index. So there you go. That is indexing. If you like this kind of headfirst tutorial that takes you through one topic, one feature, one tool, and is respectful of adult learners, consider joining my channel or uh, leaving a comment or a tip. If you know how to fix some of these bugs that I've struggled with today, I'd love to know in the comments. Otherwise, I'm happy to have taught you tonight. And uh, this is Coach T. I'll see you in the next one.